How's it going everyone? I'm Dominic from the Comic Book Report YouTube channel, over here doing another guest review for OrganicPriceBooks.com. And today, we're taking a look at the complete Al Ewing Guardians of the Galaxy run from Marvel Comics. The issues in this volume were written by Al Ewing and illustrated primarily by Juan Cabal, Marcio Takara, and Adam Gorham. The comics presented in this collection were first published by Marvel Comics beginning in 2017. The volume itself collects Guardians of the Galaxy, the 2020 series, issues 1 through 18, Rocket, the 2017 series, issues 1 through 6, and material from the Guardians of the Galaxy Annual, 2021, issue 1. This is, like I mentioned, a standard size paperback, coming in at 576 pages. It has a glued binding and is a glossy print paper stock. As we continue to look at the exteriors of this book, I will say this is one of the more recent Guardians of the Galaxy runs, and I think frankly I'm a little surprised they didn't try to put this in an omnibus, that oversized hardcover format. I know it's a bit small, but there's so many small Marvel omnibuses out there, I'm surprised we didn't see that. Or maybe this paired with the Donny Cates run would have been a nice kind of bigger Guardians omnibus. Maybe someday. At any rate, we do have this complete collection paperback, and it's nice to see it all collected in one volume. I know for me, I did read and review the Bendis omnibus not too long ago. And I was frankly eager to read more from Guardians, and so this was definitely an interesting pickup. I do like the look of the spine. I think it just looks really crisp and clear. The back cover as well is really fun. The image on the back and the front cover are both lifted from issue covers throughout this volume, which you'll see. Overall, though, it's a really nice collection. I think it's pretty standard for what you can expect from uh, trade paperback collections over at Marvel. Certainly the kind of complete paperback collections or the uh, Marvel kind of sagas. Um, but really exciting to see a whole run uh, get a paperback treatment or a collected edition, period. Always a big fan of that, and I am newer to Guardians. I haven't really read anything of Guardians of the Galaxy since the Bendis era, so I was kind of diving in relatively newer to modern, modern Guardians runs, and I do think that this was pretty nice and palatable for just new readers. I think anyone who wants to check out Guardians of the Galaxy for the first time, maybe you see this online at Organic Price Books and think, do I give it a shot? Do I need to know a ton? I would say it's pretty easy for new readers, which I really did appreciate. I know I just showed you the binding. You'll see kind of as I flip through it the amount of gutter loss there is. It is a glued binding, nothing too fancy, and I didn't think the gutter loss was too awful. As we made our way into this collection, there was kind of a breakdown of the creators across the issues and series in here. That's as close as we get to kind of a table of contents or mapping for this book, but everything's done in a pretty logical way, in my opinion. As far as the actual content, this book starts out with that Rocket Raccoon uh, miniseries, the Rocket series. Uh, you know, I think it's about six issues, give or take, I mentioned earlier. That's what we launched the book with before we jump into that 2020 Guardian series. Um, and it does kind of dovetail nicely from Rocket into that series in many ways. The Rocket series was really fascinating, I thought. I really do like the Rocket Raccoon character. And that whole miniseries feels like a heist noir, if I guess I could say. There's a lot of like hard-boiled narrative kind of dialogue situations in that book. We have the heist narrative. We have some really interesting characters included in that. I think for those that are fans of Rocket Raccoon, or maybe you've seen Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 recently, and you want more background about that character, I think that this is a really fun collection, and frankly, that miniseries was a blast to read. After that, we transition into the proper Guardians of the Galaxy run itself from Al Ewing, and it is a decidedly uh, different kind of approach, change of pace. This feels more like a science fiction epic kind of character drama. It's not as genre feeling as like that kind of noir heist narrative. Uh, so it definitely is a different flavor. It's actually surprising to me that they were written by the same people in many ways, because it's just such a huge uh, change of place tonally and with the characters they use. But I liked it. And the series kind of starts with a kind of peacetime for our Guardians. We have uh, Star-Lord with Gamora. We can see characters like Drax and Rocket and Groot, and a couple others that we maybe know from the greater Marvel Universe that you might not know as much from like the movies, for example. And they're kind of at a peacetime, basically. And then Richard Ryder, the Nova, shows up and basically says there's this new impending crisis to kind of pull them out of that peacetime. And that's sort of the inciting incident that kicks off this whole Guardians run. 
I don't want to go into too spoilery kind of territory here, but even from the back cover and the front cover alone, a couple things I can talk about. A major plot point or set of kind of adversarial characters are the Olympians from Greek mythology. They've been kind of reborn, refreshed, re-imbued with powers, and they're now kind of cosmic menaces trying to unleash their uh, dominion across the stars. The Guardians are trying to stop them. That is a really big kind of pervasive arc in this collection. Uh, you can see from the front cover we also have Dr. Doom in some way tied to this Guardians run. That happens a little bit later in the book, but frankly, that was one of my favorite additions to this title. I'm a really big fan of the Fantastic Four and Doctor Doom in general, and seeing him next to the Guardians of the Galaxy on the cover of this book was one of the things that sold me on this collection in general. I was fascinated. I didn't know if it was like a cameo or kind of a recurring thing, and I won't spoil it too much for here, but I will say I really enjoyed the presence of Doctor Doom when we got it in this book. Of course, there are many, many other stories. I think that it's interesting to see the Guardians of the team shake up a little bit. The roster we have for most of the book is quite a bit different than what I saw in the movies, for example, but they're all kind of cosmic Marvel mainstays in many ways, and over the course of the book, the roster does change a bit, which I thought was pretty cool. One thing I will say, while this is good for new readers in general, this book does kind of have to sidestep around some major Marvel events that take place throughout this run, things like the Empire event, the King in Black event, and the Alast Annihilation, which is primarily a Guardians of the Galaxy story, and we have most of that contained within this volume. One thing I will say, I'm always kind of fascinated by how these collected editions approach bigger crossover events when they interrupt a comic book run, and I think that overall, Al Ewing did it very, very, very well. I think for the most part, his series series sidesteps a lot of the major pull for the tie-ins. We have just enough to be aware that it's happening. Uh, in some ways, like Empire and Last Annihilation, where the Guardians are more important to that storyline, we do get enough narrative that we feel like we understand their piece of the puzzle. And I really like that. I think overall, you can read this cover to cover without feeling like you missed out on all that much. That being said, if you like the things they set up in those event stories with the tie-ins, you can definitely seek out some of those other books. But overall, I think you have most of Last Annihilation here. It kind of rounds out the back of this book, uh, so you don't really need too much more, in my opinion. I have not read that Empire series, but we know kind of the ramifications of it if you read this collection, so I will say, if you plan on reading that, there might be a little bit of spoilers reading this collection. Uh, I didn't really mind. I wasn't really seeking out that collection super actively, and I thought that it skimmed it over pretty nicely. But overall, a really good set of stories. I think all the characters were given their due for the most part. Uh, there are definitely those that are focused on a bit more. Uh, I do think that the plot line maybe is favored over the character development overall, but there's definitely some really good moments where certain characters shine. Uh, the, how they handle Star-Lord in this collection was also very fascinating. I don't want to go into too many details on that. I want you to read it for yourself. But they handle Star-Lord in a way I'd never seen done in comics before. Uh, so definitely eye-opening and something a little bit different. As far as the art goes, it did change hands a few times throughout this book. I know Juan Cabal was one of the main artists, and that's a name I've seen in other books recently. I'm a fan. Overall, I think all the artwork looked very polished and dialed in, and even though it changed artists throughout the book, I think that there's a similarity enough in styles that you never felt jarringly kicked out of the narrative as you switched hands, at least in my opinion. I think that there was a level of cohesion and kind of authenticity, even as the artists switch that you made you feel like you were reading one big narrative and not that you were jumping around haphazardly. Uh, I think the colorists should absolutely be commended as well in this collection. Everything here is so vibrant and it pops. There's different points throughout this book as well where they really experiment with panel layout and designs in some really kind of abstract and interesting, almost psychedelic ways, which for a kind of a interstellar sort of book, it really lends itself well. I really liked seeing it. I think some of the poppy visuals were definitely a standout with this book, and I just really enjoyed that. 
Another thing I enjoyed as well, I guess it's kind of an event this book skirted around as well, is the first Hellfire Gala, or at least of the kind of Krakoa era for the X-Men books. We have uh, Star-Lord and Nova attend the Hellfire Gala. It's only an issue or two, but being a fan of the X-Men in this current era, I was really excited to see another tie-in issue that I don't think I had read. Ultimately, it's not super significant, but we do have an appearance by some notable uh, X-Men or mutant characters, and I just thought it was a really great issue. I don't think you need to know about Hellfire Gala or really what's going on there, but if you've read some of the X-Men books in the last several years, this was another really fun tie-in. Overall, again, this book was really fun. I think it covered a lot of ground across its 20-something issues, and I am, again, surprised this didn't get a hardcover treatment, at least at the time of the recording, but it is still nice to have a full collected edition here. Have a small handful of extras at the back, mostly variant cover art galleries. We do get a lot of thumbnails rather than full pages for some of these covers, which is a bit of a shame, but it's still nice to see a lot of the artwork. And that really does it for this Guardians of the Galaxy by Al Ewing collection. A really interesting book. I think for Cosmic Marvel fans, this is definitely a worthwhile pickup. If you're a fan of the Guardians of the Galaxy uh, property in general, this is certainly something to consider. If you want to pick up your own copy, I always recommend checking out, of course, OrganicPriceBooks.com. And for more reviews from me, Dominic, you can check out my channel, The Comic Book Report. I'll probably try to do a more full review of this run in the coming weeks, so definitely check it out. And until next time, have a good one.